So in this file, what I've got is uh, a simulation of a couple of posts all standing in a row, a uh, sun point or a light source, and shadows coming down here off of them. It's different than our shadow casting that we've got in Revit because this is actual geometry. It's constructed, you can do things like you can snap geometry to it, you know, and then move your sun point and everything will move along with it. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how to make this. It's again another adaptive component family and I can just open one of these guys up to show you a little bit about it. What I've got is I've got adaptive point one, adaptive point two. Adaptive point one has a line sticking up from it and that line has is a there's a point at the top of it that point two is connected to and then there's a very long line that is essentially a projection or an extension of this line. We can just make this from scratch. So if I go to a new family and get a new adaptive component, I can drop in my two adaptive points, one and two. I select them and <clears throat> I make them adaptive. And then I drag this guy up. And what I'm going to do is I am going to host a point on the horizontal reference plane of this point there. And if I select both of these, you'll see that I've got two things selected. I just want my reference point. And I'm going to drag this guy up. And you can see that it's hosted to the point beneath it, so it moves around with it. And just to control the height of my post, I'm going to give this a parameter. <clears throat> call it H and I'm going to connect them with a line let's just do a spline by points and so I've got my post and I'm going to connect point 2 to this point as well and I'm going to make it a reference line and what this is essentially is that this is sort of the ray that goes from my light source to the top of this post and what I want to do is I want to extend that ray down to a ground plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take a model line, and I'm going to make sure that 3D snapping is not on, and I'm going to set the work plane to that, which is the work plane of this reference line. And then I'm just going to make a really goddamn long line, like that. And the reason I'm making it so long is that my sun point could come down at a very extreme angle and I want it to always be intersecting with this ground plane. I want it to actually be passing through that. So that's why I make it so long. If it was short, it would eventually sort of lift up off of that ground plane. I also don't want this to be visible when I go back to my project environment. So I just selected my model line and I'm going to uncheck visibility so it doesn't show up. And if I left it as it was, it would also just it would you'd snap to it all over the place. You'd snap to this thing like 500 feet out. So I'm going to actually turn off its reference too, so it's not a reference. That means it's just operating inside of here uh, rather than in my host environment because I don't want it to muck up everything. I'm going to take a point and I'm going to host it on this line. And what this point is going to become is it's going to become the end point of my shadow. And so I'm just going to make my shadow right now, even though it's standing up there in the sky, um, sort of a floating shadow. Uh, so there I've got my shadow. But what I need it to do is I need it to fall on the ground, you know, which is going to be down here somewhere. So that essentially means that I want it to be falling on the horizontal work plane of this guy. So I'm going to take that point, and I'm going to host it by intersection. I'm going to host it by the intersection of this plane with this line. So I'm just going to click that. You see it snaps right to it. And if I look down here, you can see this extension of this plane out to here is where that point lies. I also want my post to always be standing straight up no matter what I host it onto. So I'm going to go vertical on placement here. And that just essentially means that this horizontal work plane is always going to be horizontal and this line is always going to be pointing up. So that's pretty much all there is to this. I did some other work with um, 
the object styles to turn that red, um, which would just be you go into object styles, make yourself a new subcategory in masses, and I'd call it shadow. So now I have shadow as a line style, and I'll make it red. And now if I select this line, if I just tab select it, I can now grab that subcategory over here in its properties. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, damn. I made it as a mass. My mistake. So if I go back out here, I actually want to make a new subcategory, not in curtain panel, not in mass, but generic model. Sorry about that. Shadow. So now if I select this line, I should have it here. Shadow. Yeah, and of course I didn't actually make it red. So let's make it red. There it is. So back in, so this is the same thing that I made over here. So back in my project, I've hidden a few things here. I'm just going to turn them all on just so you can see all the underlying geometry here. Uh, and I'll just delete these guys. I just made some distance dimensions between all of those things so they'd be nice and in a row. I'm going to select everything in the entire project and delete it because I don't need it right now. And we're going to place these guys again. So I've got my generic model adaptive component called Post Shadow. And I could host this thing out here and, you know, put the point up here. I can take this post, and because I set it to vertical on placement, it's going to still stand up if I put it on this line. And then I'm also going to host it to this point. And the reason I'm hosting it to this point is because now I can grab this guy and move it around. Whoops. Yeah, you got to watch out where you put these guys. This guy is actually hosted on a some strange work plane. Uh, it's hosted on a reference point. I can just pick a new host and call that level one. Kind of looks the same, but it'll behave pretty differently. So you can see my shadow moving around. And I can take this guy and I can just hold control down and copy it like that. And you can see the shadow moving along with it. And if I take this, I can move it down, and my shadows are going to get longer. I can probably also move it way down here, and then it'll fail because my shadow will try and project off of the ground plane. Uh, but just take my word for it, you can break it. Anyway, that's how I can make a shadow using basic geometry and adaptive components.